Good morning everybody, my name is Shelby. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my garden. It is a truly a lovely morning. The high is about 78 today, which means right now, this morning during the sunrise, it's 68 degrees. So I am so happy to be sharing it with you all today. We've got a lot to get to to the garden, specifically some pest management and other maintenance things. And just so you know, in case I sound like I'm sick, I am recovering from having the actual flu, which I don't think I've ever, ever had the flu in my life. My whole family had it, my son had it. We, I had took him to the doctor yesterday, he got tested and he has the flu. So uh, that explains why we were all sick and what we all had. I feel like way, way better now. I don't have any type of symptoms or anything. I'm just kind of like, my voice is recovering right now. So if you, are noticing that I sound sick, it's because of that. All right, I'm about to brag real quick. Look at this pumpkin arch I've got going on. I'm so excited for it. This is my pumpkin pie, sugar pie, pumpkin plant. And if you've been following me for a few years, then you would know, or the whole time I've been on YouTube, I have been attempting to grow the sugar pie pumpkin on my cattle panel arches every season, and it just hasn't worked. Th these are the healthiest plants I've seen so far in my attempts, so I think I finally nailed it. I'm seeing some really healthy female flowers. If you can see back here, well, the potential of female flowers, they'll be attached to the fruits. I'm also seeing lots of male flowers too, which will be the the little like long skinny ones coming out. So if you're new to growing uh, squash, then just know typically the male flowers kind of make their appearance first before the female flowers. So it's all happening on track. Every time I walk out here with my son, I go, this is our pumpkin, our pumpkin pie plant. Mommy's going to grow some pumpkins and make you a homemade pumpkin pie from it. So I feel like that would just be like, I mean, for me, that's what gets me super excited. All right, right now we've got cabbage worms, cut worms, all other kinds of worms, you name it, attacking the zucchinis, the squash, the spaghetti squash, pumpkins, everything like that that is in my garden. You just turn up a leaf and you can see find these worms very easily. This is, oh, there you go. God, I hate doing that. Ugh. Okay, I hate doing that. It really grosses me out. That one was really big and it's not as bad when they're smaller and I find them and I squish them. Anyways, my plants are trying their, their damnedest little hearts out to survive these cabbage worm, cut worm, melon worms attacks, okay? I don't even know which ones they are because there's so many of them at this point. Anyways, I cannot hold these plants' hands. I can't treat them like my little babies, although I wish I could because I have actual babies inside the house. I just don't got time for that. I just don't. I had been coming out here and squishing them and doing all of my like nightly inspections and uh, I just can't do it anymore. They're happening so frequently that I need to resort to using Bt. Now if you're not familiar with Bt, it's a bacteria that specifically is supposed to kill, control worms, caterpillars, uh, on fruits and vegetables and things like that. So it says it's for organic gardening. I'm sure that can be as debatable, I'm sure. I do not use things like that lightly, only in extreme circumstances. And I am like weighing out what I rather have to purchase. There's a crow over there going nuts. Would I rather have to purchase vegetables from a grocery store that I don't know how they're being taken care of? They could be treated with much worse things than just BT, or would I rather use BT and 
know that I'm getting pretty much organic vegetables at my house and also saving a lot of money. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be using the BT today to manage all of these plants. And I know that it certainly works because we had, I forgot what the name of this particular caterpillar was. We had like an all out almost, I say infestation, it sounds dramatic. We just had a bunch of these uh, like spiky m caterpillars on the back porch. So there must have been this moth that laid its caterpillar eggs. We had never, we've been here for years and we had never seen this caterpillar before. Long story short, and I'll, I'll find out what it is. I'll put it on the screen, pictures, things like that. It is definitely, it's not poisonous. It's if you touch the furs of the caterpillar, it is, um, going to cause like a severe pain and we've got little kids playing and things like that so I had been applying the BT like around the perimeter of the porch and I would see these caterpillars just like dead basically afterwards and if it's between the caterpillar or my kids having extreme pain then you know that's kind of where I draw the line so I know that the BT does work it's just a bacteria it's supposed to um, definitely eradicate these little nuisance creatures so that's why I have resorted to using it because uh, I would rather have you know an abundance of vegetables at my house that were grown you know with good conditions than none at all if you are wondering like how do I know that these little critters are on the squash plants uh, well first of all you can see like blemishes and things like that you can also smell if your squash plant is having some type of like literal like decay once you know the smell of like a squash plant like um, damage or raw or decay you just walk by it it's undeniable basically so what you'll want to do for squash pest management is inspect the underside of the leaves, especially if you're seeing um, like little holes and things like that. Obviously that means like a little critter is eating that because that's not just like wind damage. You should be able to find this little worm creating like a little taco cocoon with a leaf. I'm gonna see if I can find one. Yep, right here. If you can see part of the leaf crunched together, like this leaf is just broken off and there's definitely a caterpillar in there trying to um, become a little moth and reproduce. So this little guy will definitely wreak a lot of havoc on your garden. Oh, and there's another one. So there's a lot of them. They are really efficient at um, repopulating themselves. And usually I just kind of smush them like this. You can do that. Which hand smushing them is definitely an effective method, but I've got such a big garden and everything. And I'm not just solely, it is a hobby. Like this is definitely something I really enjoy, but I truly do want to grow enough food to actually not have to make as many trips to the grocery store and be more self-sustainable and things like that. So uh, anyways, I am gonna spray this on the underside of the leaves. As with any type of pest application, whether it's just like a homemade vinegar baking soda solution or neem oil, which is also excellent, or anything like that, always apply it either first thing in the morning or after the high noon so like around maybe like six o'clock like so in the morning or like towards the sunset you never want to apply any of these things whether they're organic or not when the sun is at its highest point of the day i don't care if you don't have time and you're like this is the only time of day i have to do this you are seriously risking damaging burning all of your plants and um, potentially killing them it's just too much so apply them first thing oh my gosh here's another one I just pulled this leaf I literally just pulled this leaf so 
So as you can see, I've got to take some drastic measures here. I will include a link on Amazon to uh, where I bought this because this stuff really does actually work. The way that it works is they have to eat the actual bacteria and then they'll die like a few days later. So just spray the underside of your leaves wherever you see a problem and it should work pretty effectively. You can remove any that are currently causing a problem. I would recommend removing as much as you physically can and then this stuff should just go to work for you while you're not even there. I'm having the same issue here with my spaghetti squash. And for a good minute there, I really didn't think that these were gonna make it, honestly. But I think like doing the worm castings application gave them that strength to move past the attack and continue to grow. But I still have to remove and just eradicate these um, pests that are still happening. And I'm hoping like with the cooler weather too, that all of this is gonna slow down, all of the cutworms and things like that. That way it's not as much of a problem. Just applying this to the underside of the leaves. Anywhere I see the damage happening. I also have corn growing and I'm just going to spray these just like as a preliminary caution because the only thing that's ever just like fully killed my corn is like cutworms and things like that. Like there's always just those little worms inside the corn. I'm sure if you've grown corn before, you know what I'm talking about. Now with these worms for corn specifically, they typically grow like on the inside area. So I'm just gonna give them a little bit of this. And let me know your opinions on BT, if you've been using it. I mean, it's worked for me for like a genuine pest issue we were having. I've never used it on the garden. I just haven't allowed myself to use it before, but I would just rather have things grown at my house in abundance than buy stuff from the grocery store where, like I said before, you don't even know how it's been taken care of. You don't know what they applied on it. It could be many other things that are far worse. While I'm thinking about it, I wanted to give you an update on that spin down hose thing that I purchased to that it's like basically clearing out all the sediment in my hose. We live on a well and typically every morning, it like the filter area that meets the garden would fill up with sediment. So I purchased this really affordable little item from Amazon. I'll link it again so that it could just like catch all that sediment. And let me just say, I have not had a single issue at all since then. And it's been like two weeks or so. Uh, so we haven't had any issues. It's catching all the sediment. It's working really well for the price that it is. Like I would highly recommend it. I don't know if you can see in there, but there must be like three or four tablespoons worth of sediment that it has caught. Not a single clog with my hose up there. And like I said before, this was not like a sponsored thing. I just genuinely had this problem with my well and this has solved it so far. The cons would be that the, the actual um, device is mostly just plastic. So I don't see it having like a really long life basically but for right now for it was anywhere between like 13 and 15 dollars and that price changes i'm sure it could go up and down for that like small amount of investment it's definitely fixing the very irritating issue of having my hoses constantly clogged with sediment in this middle area right here i decided i'm gonna start planting banana trees like within the inside of the garden I want there to be more like natural shade. It's really like desolate and hot and not a welcoming place that you'd wanna be 
in the middle of the summertime, like especially in the heat of the afternoon. There's just no natural shade, especially when you're like in between seasons and there's no crops at all going. So I wanna start planting within the center of the garden, some like banana trees, papaya trees, things that don't have like a really intense root system that kind of, have a life cycle uh, as you will as opposed to something that's going to last for like 10 whatever years and like really shade things and get huge so i'm going to start putting more tropical things uh, filtered through the inside of the garden that way i'm really kind of working with that true permaculture style and th the things that require shade and are better with shade are going to do better with that natural shade and then there's going to be some areas that are just sunnier so it's going to be more of like a natural environment this banana tree is the only banana tree i have right now it's never done well banana trees are an herb they're actually not like a tree they're the world's largest herb it's never done good here because it i think is lonely it doesn't have any other companions around it i assumed that because it got a little bit of the hose spray that it would do well and that this is just a good environment for it but I just don't think it's getting enough like mulching and water so I'm going to transplant this into the garden and then hope that the banana tree starts to produce pups which is like the little shoots that come out from the bottom and that will just continue to have a source of banana trees naturally through the garden. I want the garden to be not just like a, a vegetable like place for me to... Are you serious right now? <sighs> okay. <sighs> it's still a beautiful morning, you guys. It's still a beautiful morning. That's what happens when you leave your shovels outside like all the time. And it's a good thing that we have like 800 shovels. I don't even know where we got them from, honestly, or how we've acquired this many shovels, but I'm gonna grab one real quick. I'm not gonna show you the inside of my garage because it's an absolute, absolute mess. All right, I got myself a new shovel. This one does not have a wooden handle. So if this one snaps, that's gonna be real crazy. I keep hearing somebody's like baby goat making little crying noises, and I keep thinking it's my baby crying because my my husband's inside with the kids right now uh, but I keep thinking it's my baby but it's not it's like a little baby goat making little crying noises one of our neighbors uh, obviously got some new baby goats which is super cute I love being out in the morning because I feel like you can really hear all the little animals around us and all like the roosters and things like that anyways let's get to work let's get this banana tree out and transplanted. I could tell that one was gonna snap when I was like pulling on it. Okay, easy enough. It's not a super deep root system. So I actually am seeing that there's little banana babies sprouting the little banana pups which I love how they call them pups I think it's so cute and that means that the plant is still viable it's a good plant and let's go put it in the garden this is a banana pup which just kind of spurs off from the mother plant you can see that this one is happening too I want like a little bit of space in between this bed and the reason why I think it's going to do so well is because that sprinkler is right there. And there's really, we mulch a lot here. So, like just here, I'll show you how much water is retained under this mulch. So the top of the mulch, it looks like it's nice and dry right now, right? Uh, but if you just move your hand around a little bit, you'll start to see that it's very very wet retaining a lot of really good moisture and that's what those banana plants the banana trees as you will that is what they want is just that constant like retained mulching moisture because they're a really tropical plant they don't you know want to be dried out and things like that and i basically had them 
in the middle of like the abyss all lonely in the sand so this is going to be much better for this banana plant my goal is to create a true permaculture environment which is just working with the full landscape to create this permanent ecosystem that all like coexist together oh my god there was a crane over there that scared me holy cow i was not it's like this huge animal you guys know i have all these cranes in my yard i was like oh, what is moving over there anyways permaculture is just using the entire environment to work together i know there's like a lot of different definitions of it but my definition of it would be to have the entire garden working as a miniature ecosystem permanently, and which is why I believe in deep mulching, because now we're able to, you know, plant things wherever we want in the garden because we've started to create this really deep, uh, very organic matter with all of the mulching. And it's very healthy, very, very healthy soil. And it's just going to continue to get healthier over the years as we continue to improve the soil and continue to incorporate more mulch into it. So that way we can start growing whatever we want through the garden as opposed to just focusing on the beds or just focusing on the rows and depleting nutrients from just those areas. We are focusing on the whole landscape and how we can incorporate like banana trees, for example, in the middle of the garden to grow up and then use these banana leaves as fertilizer and as mulching and things like that too. So that's why we don't use uh, landscape fabric. It's really expensive. It's not the most effective method anyways. And I feel like for how much weeds you still get with landscape fabric, you might as well just use mulch, like generally it's free, and you're actually doing something beneficial uh, for your entire miniature ecosystem. All right, we've got the banana tree planted right now, looking lovely. I'm really excited to just start filling up like the whole center of the garden that way everything just looks like more natural and organic and everything and we can actually be out here in the heat of the summer when the sun is out and i'm looking for like a cement table to put on the center part in the center part of the garden so that we can hang out here and do all the different types of stuff and just have it be more of like a welcoming space than just coming out here to garden harvest and leave type of thing. This is just one small step to kind of changing the way we've been doing it for the past few seasons. I'm just gonna kind of give you guys like an update on what is growing. Right now it's not a full garden tour, just a mini like showing you what is going on. So we've got some peas growing. They look really healthy. I've got sunflowers going in the middle. The peas are already starting to trellis up. I have three different beds full of peas because my three-year-old absolutely loves the peas anytime he sees them he picks them so I'm trying to grow like an abundance of them so that maybe we can have some to bring in the house and actually use for like recipes and stuff but that is like his number one snack in the garden he loves picking those and then I've got our zucchini right here this is the I think it's a black beauty zucchini that's what it says right here then we've also got i think also our black beauty eggplant so there you go here we have some squash those plants need some serious help or they're not gonna survive long this bed is my square foot garden bed and i have these cucumbers right here, just ready to trellis up the side. I feel like they were a little stunted for some time because they were planted at the same time as the uh, pumpkins back there, and they're not very tall. They haven't gone up very tall at all. 
they're just they're just now starting to take off so I hope that we get some cucumbers growing and the whole square foot garden needs a little bit of weeding I'm gonna have to thin it out but things are definitely happening within the square foot garden I've got a lot of different brassicas that have sprouted all around the whole entire garden. It's not really much to look at right now. In like a week or so, I'll have more to show you on that. But I've been really specifically moving them. That way they have like at least like a square foot each. So I'm really excited with the progress that the garden is making so far. I feel really positive about it. And right now for me, fall is like one of my favorite times of the year to garden. You could do a lot, the weather's amazing, it's enjoyable to be out here, and you can grow all different types of like cabbage and just things like that that you can't typically grow other times of the year. So I'm really leaning into embracing the fall season as most people do. Um, but also fall is a time to start planning like how are you going to attack the spring garden? you know, what types of improvements are you going to make or changes are you going to make as well? That's also what I have on my mind. And I know that I want to expand more rows right here and also more rows at the front of the garden. I don't know if you can see and work on our water system before it becomes spring again. So depending on the zone that you're in, fall might be a time to grow or it might be a time to plan and think ahead for the next seasons. So even though you might not be able to grow things right now or your seasons are wrapping up, that doesn't mean that you can't be passively gardening by planning and looking forward to inspiration and things like that too. Oh, but that is basically all I've got going on today. I have a lot more weeds to pull and things like that. One of my next videos will definitely be like a full garden tour because things will be bigger and everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, my name is Shelby and until next time, bye.